Hey everyone, it's Jordan with Illuminlight here and we are going to fix a problem today. A problem that you may run into after you've had your epoxy project for a long time. And that is fixing a bunch of damage that's probably happened to it over the course of its life. This cutting board that we've actually just finished making, if you haven't watched how we made this cutting board, go back and watch those videos now. This cutting board we just made is now beat up. Why? Well, because I took a knife to this for what felt like hours. We're gonna go ahead and fix this pour by sanding it down, getting a nice, clean, even surface, and then re-pouring the top. Simple two-step process to get your cutting board, your end table, whatever epoxy project that you have, back in better shape. So let's jump in, let's get started with the first step. All right, so the first step we're gonna do is actually do some sanding, believe it or not. Why are we sanding? Well, we want this coat that we have here, this scratched up coat, to have a nice chemical bond to the coat we're going to pour on top of it. Surface area is important for these two pours because we want the maximum amount of contact between them as possible. So why we're sanding is sanding naturally puts grooves, it puts cuts into that top surface. So increasing this actual surface area available to us to connect to. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna use my random orbital sander here I got a 120 grit pad, that's deep enough. It's not super deep, it's not 40 or 60, uh, but it's not really fine. It's not 320, 400, 600. 120 is a good amount. We're gonna sand this pretty evenly and smoothly. Then we're gonna mix up eight ounces of resin, pour that on top and finish it just like we did in the last video. Now, it's important when you're sanding to wear a respirator. We're atomizing this epoxy and that means you're gonna be able to inhale it. We don't want that. So wear a respirator whenever you're sanding epoxy. All right, let's get to it. Again, I'm not trying to level this off and do a perfect job sanding here. All I'm doing is increasing surface area to increase the intensity of that chemical bond. Take your pad off, fold it in half. Now, let's do the sides. Sanding's done. We gotta get rid of all this dust though. So let's get a paper towel, get some alcohol on there, and then wipe down this board. When it comes to dust removal, take your time here, right? If we didn't remove all this dust, we'd try to pour a top coat and there'd be, a, suddenly there'd be gunk in there and our, our top coat wouldn't look good. You'd have little pits and things created by that dust. So take your time on this step. Get rid of everything that you can. All right, in the previous video, we did a top coat here. We used eight ounces. We're gonna use eight ounces again, just like normal. Mix it up according to the mixing instructions. If you've never seen that video, check that video out. Then we're gonna pour in the center. Spread this evenly out with our hands. Manage the drips with a popsicle stick over the five to 10 minutes after that initial pour, let it fully cure for five to seven days, and then we're back in business. 